And good evening. Thank you for joining me for prayer time tonight. We're going to be looking at a passage in the book of Genesis. Excuse me, I said Genesis. I meant Exodus chapter 5. We were talking about Genesis today in our small group. And if you are a part of our small group ministry at Gold Hill, I want to invite you to get involved in a small group. We have some wonderful studies. Hey, you pretty much know everybody that's in your small group. If you attend on a casual basis or if you're uh, someone that's very faithful to attend on Sunday mornings, it's a great time for you to get into the Word of God and get some input from some other people and some other mentoring. So let me recommend right away that if you're not part of a small group assembly at Go Hill Wesleyan, we want you to do that. Small groups meet every Sunday morning at 9.15. The young adults are in the book of Genesis. Others are in the minor prophets. So it's a great time to be studying the Word of God as we get into 2023. Tonight, I want to, uh, first of all, thank the good Lord for the wonderful day we had at church, the wonderful people who worked with the service and who were a part of the service. Thank our praise team, musicians, uh, workers with our lighting and our sound people. I want to thank our Sunday school teachers, and I also want to thank our incredible board, local board of administration. We had a wonderful meeting today, a lot of excitement about some of the events that are coming up in our church. We plan to have our breakfast this month. We plan on having a special soup. S-O-U-P-E-R, Super Bowl Sunday coming up in February. Uh, some other events coming up in the early part of the year. Very excited about it. And we're looking forward to just the opportunity for God to work in our hearts and lives. So I want you to be praying for our church. Now, there are a lot of times when we enter into activities or into specific areas of ministry in which we feel as though uh, something's wrong. Uh, we we I, we don't know what's wrong. We, we thought we were being obedient to God's design and desire. And then we, we try something and we think we have a clear calling about something, get involved in it. And then all of a sudden it seems like things backfire. But we're reminded again, God kind of speaks to us, whispers in our ear or sets up a circumstance for us to repeat the same procedure. We try it again and it seems to fail again. And finally we get to the point where we ask God, are you sure? Are you sure we're supposed to be doing that? Are you sure uh, this is the pathway I should choose? Sometimes it gets all the way up to asking God, are you sure that this is right for me? Am I in the right place? Am I doing the right thing? Am I being obedient? Am I misunderstanding you? And I want to just assure you tonight that just because things don't always go as planned, it doesn't mean that you're not precisely where God wants you to be. It's important that we realize that throughout the scriptures, we see situations and examples of that fact. As a matter of fact, I want to draw your attention to one that's probably better known. Uh, we could go all the way back to Genesis whenever things happened to Joseph in the land of Egypt. But I want to look at the land of Egypt, but during the time of Moses. We know that Moses has fled from Egypt. Uh, he has left after being raised by Pharaoh's family, by his daughter. And he killed an Egyptian who, when he saw him mistreating one of the Israelite slaves. And so he had to flee because it was word got out. He is told by God through a burning bush that he wants him to go back. And God has heard the people of Israel that are trapped there in Egypt, that are in slavery and bondage. And he wants to use Moses to guide them out of their slavery. Well, Moses takes his brother Aaron and the two of them head to see Pharaoh and they discuss the possibility of the Israelites leaving Egypt for a period of time to go and worship their God out in on the mountains. And Pharaoh takes exception to this request of Moses and he makes things more difficult on the Israelite slave. If you know anything about chapter 5 of Exodus, we have the appearance of Moses and Aaron before Pharaoh but then Pharaoh all of a sudden gets very upset at the request made by Moses. He thinks that there's more to it, and there is more to it. God's eventually going to release all the Israelites. But uh, Pharaoh decides that he doesn't want to let them go. And not only that, he decides that this idea of Moses, he won't recognize Moses as God, but he thinks it's just because that the Israelites are lazy and they have time on their hands to think of this sort of thing. Maybe he's thinking others put him up to it. And so he makes it very hard for the Israelites by taking away their supply of straw that they use to make bricks. Instead, he decides to make the Israelites go out and gather their own straw to make their bricks for the building that's going on in Egypt. 
and their production and output is supposed to be the exact same amount that it was prior whenever Egypt would supply the straw for them. So he's really put an extra burden on the Israelite children. As and I say children, I mean all of the people of Israel, children of Israel. He's made it very difficult for them to keep up their quota when now they have to gather their own straw to make brick. And a lot of the Israelite leaders don't understand this. Why is Pharaoh being so hard on them? And when their production is not up to code, these people are getting beaten because they're not having the same output that they did when Egypt was supplying them with the straw necessary. The Israelite leaders, they talk to Pharaoh, they say, look, it's almost impossible for us to keep up the quota whenever we're having to gather our own straw. And that's when Pharaoh says, look, it's because you're lazy that you're not doing this. You have time on your hands to think of these ideas like leaving and going to worship your God. Now, I want to pick up the reading in Exodus chapter 5, beginning with verse 19. This will recap a little bit, but I want to get into what Moses has to say here right after it. In verse 19, it says, The Israelite overseers realized they were in trouble when they were told, You are not to reduce the number of bricks required of you for each day. When they left Pharaoh... They found Moses and Aaron waiting to meet them, and they said, May the Lord look on you and judge you. You have made us obnoxious to Pharaoh and his officials and have put a sword in their hand to kill us. Now, not literally, but they're saying you made it very hard on us. And we, you know, they're being sarcastic to Moses and Aaron. You know, Thank you so much. You've made things so much more difficult now that you've shown up and tried to get us the opportunity to follow God. Now, uh, they may have thought prior that it might be a great idea. Moses appeared to some of the Israelite leaders beforehand, but they're complaining now. And then I want you to listen to what Moses says in verse 22. Moses returned to the Lord and said, Why, Lord, why have you brought trouble on this people? Is this why you sent me? Ever since I went to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has brought trouble on his people, and you have not rescued your people at all. See, there's a very popular teaching in the church today that tells us that if things aren't going the way that we think they should be going, or the way we perceive they should be going, then we must be doing something wrong. Well, it would be very easy for Moses at this point to think, Some, I, I, are you sure I must have done something wrong, or you must be giving me bad information? Somewhere along the line, communication is broken down. This can't be right. Are you sure about this, Lord? You sent me here, and all that's happened is things have gotten more difficult for my people, and also the people hate me for what's happened, for my going to Pharaoh. Today, we would be taught that there must be sin in our life if things aren't working out just right. There must be something that you've misunderstood from God if things aren't a blessing to us. I want you to understand that's not necessarily the case we know that God was still in control of the situation and was going to deliver the children of Israel. And he was going to do it through Moses. He had told Moses that at the beginning. There was no change in his plans. Moses was right where he was supposed to be. He was being obedient. He was doing what he was supposed to do. But things were becoming very difficult for him. Just because things may be becoming more difficult in your life, does not mean at all that you're out of the will of God. You may be exactly in the location God wants you to be. He had to get Moses back to Egypt. He got him all the way back there with his brother Aaron in order to lead the people out. He couldn't lead the people out. Well, I guess he could figure it out some way, but he wanted a leader there, and he wanted Moses to be his leader to get the people delivered out of Egypt. God wants you to sometimes take on things that appear very difficult that may be something that you risk misunderstanding that may require you to exhibit faith like you've never exhibited before in order to make his plan come about in the process that he wants to use. He wants to use you to minister in his kingdom in some way. And sometimes may, we may look at it and we may think, I'm doing a terrible job here, Lord. You must have chosen the wrong person, Lord. Uh, things aren't working out the way that I thought they would or the way that I presumed that they would? Are you sure that things are the way that you want them? Because I feel as though something must be wrong. Don't believe it. If you are being obedient to God, you're prayerfully considering God's will, and you are humbly yielding to His Holy Spirit to lead you, 
you might be exactly where God wants you to be. Tune out those voices that are always telling you, well, you're you're doing this wrong, you're doing this all wrong. Or Moses had to tune them out for many, many, uh, well, it doesn't say how long, I was going to say many months, could have been many years as he went out in the wilderness, or, or rather as he led the people out in the wilderness. There were still people getting on to him, hounding him. Are you sure that you heard from God? This just doesn't seem right, Moses. And this was going on way back when he first encountered Pharaoh upon his return to Egypt. Are you sure? Moses now questioning God because he's probably questioned himself. You may be questioning yourself today or tonight about something you're involved in for the kingdom, hoping to forward the ministry and the gospel. Maybe it's testifying to friends. Maybe it's trying to encourage people to come to your church. Maybe it's trying to encourage people to give Jesus their heart. And you feel as though all that you're being met with are stone walls, brick walls. You're not getting anywhere. And yet you still feel that God's persuading you to continue to try. Continue to try if you feel like that's God's will. If you're yielded to him and you're certain of his calling, keep going forward. Because you may be exactly where God wants you to be. Nobody ever said that ministering in the kingdom was going to be easy. There are going to be setbacks, there's going to be trials, and there's going to be questions. Time you question, or rather I should say, times you question yourself and times you question God. Hey, God's a big God. He can handle your questions. Stay faithful to him. Stay faithful to your calling and faithful to your ministry because eventually the walls will fall. You can ask Joshua about that when they went into Jericho. You can ask Moses about releasing the children of Israel whenever you read Exodus, just how God finally got it done exactly the way that he planned. He had Moses in the right place at the right time, just as he may have you at the right place at the right time. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, we thank you so much for this time we have shared in your word, and we pray tonight that you would lead us and guide us in the right direction. There are times we get discouraged. There are times when we feel like it's all futile. There are times when we just don't feel like we can find the energy to try again. Help us to be obedient and to stay the course, knowing you have us exactly where you want us to be. It's not always going to be what we expect. It doesn't always mean that there's going to be blessings and not cursings from those that we listen to. It doesn't always mean that we're going to triumph over the obstacle immediately or that riches wait on the other side. There may be struggles, and we may never actually see ourselves the payoff that's promised. Nevertheless, our time is not wasted if we live for the Lord and do his bidding. Help us to hear clearly your spirit and be guided by him always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, thank you for joining me tonight. Hi to everyone, and have a good week. We truly wish you the very best. Be in prayer for the church, and may God truly bless you throughout this week to get, uh, that we have together. God bless.